Hello Sordovala. You make quite interesting videos on Mohammed's marriage and having sex with Aisha. Your argument is creative and intelligently displayed. But I think you are utterly wrong. Your argument goes like this. You show that the age of consent was different throughout history and that there are differences among countries even today. You conclude that the age of consent at least the age of consent according to human-made law, is arbitrary and none of these laws is more just than the other. In consequence, one cannot take one law or moral code to judge a person who lived under another law. Now, if we look for the history of the age of consent, we see that it is not random. We see a steady increase of this age. Why is this the case? Some points were mentioned already in text and video replies. Some hundred years ago the life expectancy was pretty low. While a few people got quite old, most died at a young age. Thus, the period in which women would give birth was prolonged by a low age of consent. I think this is true, but it does not explain why the age of consent was risen since, since then. KT45 cited some medical studies in his video reply. Those studies were about the maternal mortality depending on the age of the pregnant. Those studies show, for example, that 10 to 14 year olds have a five times higher risk to die during birth than women of the age of 20 to 24. But not only the improvements of medical knowledge plays a role here, but also the improvement of psychological knowledge. The effects of child abuse are well known today. This can be depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, emotional dysregulation, neurosis and a lot more. Not all victims of child abuse will suffer from these illnesses, but a lot do. All this is not known for a very long time now. Psychology is not older than 150 years, I think and systematic inquiry on the impact of crimes on the lives of victims is even much younger. Children and adolescents face special dangers of sexual abuse compared to adults. They are physically weaker, but also they are in the process of becoming responsible for themselves. Thus, they can be tricked, fooled and deceived more easily than adults. Because of this, the laws of many countries have different levels of protection according to the age of both persons having sex. How does this look like in different countries? In Germany, for example, the age of consent is at 16. Adults are not allowed to have sex with a person of lesser age. But there is an exception. If the older person is between 16 and 21, the age of consent is 14. This law takes into account that the differences in power and knowledge are bigger between an adolescent and an adult than they are between adolescents. You see, this law does not prevent adolescents from having sex. It protects them from being exploited. If the older person is a confidant to the younger, a teacher for example, the age of consent is set at 18. This is due to the fact that a consent has more influence on the adolescent than another person. Now, in your list, you mentioned the US and Bolivia these countries are taking extremes regarding the age of consent. In the US, the age of consent is from 16 to 18, depending on the state. Most of these states have a so-called close-in-age exception, either as a part of the law or as an accepted defense in court. This means, for example, that in a state where the age of consent normally is 18, it is 16 if the age difference is 5 years or less. On the other hand, there is Bolivia. The age of consent here is 12. For most of us, this seems pretty low. But as the German and the US law, the Bolivian law acknowledges that adolescents older than 12 also need a special protection. If a person younger than 17 was manipulated into sexual acts by deceit, by harassment or coercion, or if the adult is a confident then this is regarded as a crime. Law on the age of consent adopts to changings of circumstances, 
the longer life uh, lifespan for example. It takes improvements of psychological and medical knowledge into account. And protecting children and adolescents from sexual abuse. Different countries take different approaches. They may set a low age of consent and put older adolescents under special protection, like Bolivia. They may set a high age of consent and define exceptions like the years do. Or they have a mixed approach like Germany. Sort of a law. What you saw as the indication for the deficiency and randomness of so-called human law is actually a sign of its strength. Human law is able to evolve. It can adapt to changed circumstances and it can be improved according to our knowledge. Divine law cannot evolve. Sharia is a law from the 7th century. It is adopted to the society back then and it is based on the small knowledge people had back then. My video is titled Sharia law or cultural relativism? My answer is neither of those. As far as law develops according to the improvement of our knowledge, we can indeed rate laws. We can say that a law that does not take into account the possible physical and psychological harm is worse than a law that does. Sharia law on the age of consent is worse than modern laws are, be it Bolivian, German or US law. Now, is Mohammed to blame for having sex with nine-year-old Aisha? If he acted according to the law and the conventions of his time, I'd say no, he is not to blame. Of course, we cannot say for sure that this was the case. But Mohammed was not just a member of that society, he was a post to Meccan society and he was a lawgiver himself. The Islamic law was created according to his decisions, his sayings, his actions. If we want to know if Muhammad was to blame, we cannot refer to pre-Islamic Meccan law consequently. We have to ask if Muhammad's decisions regarding Aisha were according to the best of his knowledge. My answer is, this could very well be the case. Muhammad was after all a person from the 7th century with the limited knowledge they had back then.